Hi, Grade 12s. Welcome back to another lesson on mathematical literacy. Today, the focus is going to be on our final examination preparation for paper two. As we have seen in the exam guide, we were just guiding you through the paper and breaking it down in levels and in questions what to expect. So today we're going to go deeper and answer those questions together. So I hope you have your pen, your paper, your ruler, and also your calculator so that you can follow through as I continue on the screen. All right. Just as a reminder of the levels, we've got level one to four, and level one and two, there we've got 45 marks, plus or minus 45 marks for the easy questions. It, when you look at this, this gives you about 90 marks. So for some of us who are struggling with uh, measurements, uh, we can really capitalize on these easy questions and pass our paper. But for those of us who are looking for distinctions, we do well to go and revise those multi-step questions where they're asking you to do calculations that require you to do more than two steps uh, minimum. And also on those reasoning and reflecting where you need to give a reason or you need to critique something or you need to verify something. Go and learn those ones and then you got your distinction. Action verbs that we need to remind ourselves, we have seen this quite a number of times. We need to know how to analyze, that is to interpret. When they say calculate, we need to know that they're looking for a numerical answer. When they're asking us to classify, they're asking us to, to group these things into their common characteristics. When we ask to compare, we need to talk about the similarities or the differences. Defining, we need a meaning and it needs to be clear. If it's in context, you must also mention the context. Describing, we need you to state in words or tell us, maybe if they ask you to describe the directions from one place to another, we need you to tell us word for word. Determine, that means calculating or discovering the answer, maybe by going through the information that is given. Discussing, you need to look at all the information and come up with a conclusion. Differentiate, you now look at the differences of uh, what you are given. Explaining, again, we need you to be clear and interpret and tell us exactly what you are thinking. Identifying things, maybe identifying the towns on the map, you need to give us the names of uh, those and help us to pay attention to say, okay, what is the type of map that is used here? Identify the type of map you need to give us that map. Listing, naming, and stating, these three, they have something in common because they don't want you to discuss a lot of things. We just want those names. We just want those towns. We just want those streets. Uh, we just want that direction without you giving us, we just want that campus direction without you giving us a lot of um, information. Suggesting, sometimes they can ask you to critique, sometimes they can ask you to give a solution. That is where now you need to explain uh, in detail as well. Right, so what can we expect in question number one? We will expect questions based on measurements, maps, and plans. And these questions are going to be level ones like we have mentioned in the previous video. Now, let us see what kind of questions we can expect in these topics. And question number one has the statement there that says the picture alongside is a scaled drawing of a t-shirt for grade 12 learners. There you can see on a the side, there is the front and the back uh, side of the t-shirt. They're asking us to calculate. They're looking for a numerical value. Calculate the number of letters needed to print the logo on the front of the t-shirt. You can see this is the front of the t-shirt. What we're going to do, we're going to go and count our letters. So you can see here already there are four. Here there are also four. And then here there are three. And when you see past, there are four letters. Then here we count about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve letters. And then on literacy is two, four, six, eight letters. When you add them up, yes, add them up there for me, you have how many? You've got about 35 letters. 
you've got 35 letters. Then you write your answer, you get your two marks. The next question, the next question there you have, write down. Writing down, it means you just need to go read it off some way. And where are we going this side? We're going back to our picture. There is our picture where the volume is. Now they want you to tell them this amount here, how much is it? If you read it off from here, you can see these small lines, they represent two, two, two. So it's two and four. So that is about 44 degrees Celsius. You just take it from there and you approximate it to say it's approximately 44 degrees Celsius. This is part of measuring that we did in class. So you measure, tem you measure uh, temperature and then you write it down. You measure volume, you can measure uh, uh, weight using your BMIs and your scales. So that's, those are the kind of questions to expect. The next question there, they are asking us to explain the meaning. Now we need to talk, now we need to write down. Explain, we need to write down in words the meaning of the scale in the drawing alongside. Where is the scale? Here is the scale. So we need to write this one is to 25 in words. How do we do that? Now we're going to write one unit on the picture or on the diagram in this context represents <coughs> represents <coughs> excuse me it represents 25 units in reality. In reality, it's very important for you to tell us uh, where and where are you referring to. Are you talking about the picture or the diagram or the map? Write it down, one unit on the map, one unit on the plane, and tell us what does it represent in reality. Sometimes they can ask you what the bar scale means. Just make sure that you go back and check that one out. Okay, not to forget that at times they will ask you what type of scale is used there. You need to be able to mention what type of scale is that. Referring to number four, it says there we must measure <coughs> the length of the back of the t-shirt in millimeters. They gave us an instruction, not in centimeters. So we go and we look at our, our, the back part of our t-shirt there. I've already put a ruler for you in the exam. You need to take your ruler, go measure, start at zero. And then here, it's a bit tiny, but it gives us there about, this is 10, and then you're counting five from 10, it gives you 15, and then plus that tiny one there, it gives you 16 millimeters. <clears throat> your, 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 your work here is just to measure. They don't want you to calculate. So you measure, you write it down, you move on to the next question to save your time as well. <coughs> Excuse me. The second uh, part of question one there, it says the photograph and the sketch alongside show a circular swimming pool in the portion of Annette's garden. So there's a swimming pool in a in a garden. Okay, you can see the dimensions are provided there and there's a note to tell us the distance of AB is 57,5 meters. They've also mentioned that the units are in meters. If the units are not the same, make sure you do the conversions appropriately. So, first question they're asking us to define the term perimeter in context or in this context. We know that perimeter is the distance around an object or a figure or a shape, but in this context, we're talking about a garden. Let's talk about the, the, the outside part, not the swimming pool. So you need to tell us that is the total distance, total distance around the garden. Or you can even mention whose garden is this, the garden. 
Then you get your two marks around. We don't go inside. We just go around, round, 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 round. Right. So the next question, they are asking us to give the ratio, the ratio of distance CB to distance AD in unit form. So the order in which we're going to write this, it's very important because they're saying CB2. So we start with CB is to AD. What is the distance CB? It's 9,45. What is the distance AD? It's 10,9 meters. Now in unit form, it simply means one of the side has to be one. So how are we going to do that? We're going to divide both sides by 9,45. We're going to divide both sides by the left-hand side number, the number on the left-hand side. So we take our calculator, right? So let's put our numbers in the calculator. It's 9.45 divided by 9.45, wait, let me not do that one. It's one, obviously. Then I'm going to say 10.9 divided by 9.45. Yes, so our answer is 1.153. Answer is one is to 1.153. That is our answer in unit form. The next question, they're asking us to determine the length of the radius. Determine the length of the radius. What is the radius? We can see we are given the diameter, the distance from one point to another. Now we're looking for the radius. The radius is half of the diameter. So our R will be 4.37 divided by 2. 4.37 divided by 2, and we do it on our calculator. 4.37, then we're dividing it by 2. What do we get? We get 2.185. So our answer, 2.185 meters. That is our, our radius. All well and done and easy. Let us see what other question we can be given. It says, Kimberly experienced heavy thunderstorms on the 11th of March, 2019, Celeste, a resident of Kimberley, studied the weather forecast below relating to the following day to determine whether it was necessary to take an umbrella to work. Here is the weather forecast from uh, one o'clock to five o'clock. There the question is asking us to determine the probability that it will rain when Celeste leaves work at 2.30 p.m. Let's go and look for 2.30. We can see that we have two o'clock and then we have three. But we know that 2.30 is between this time interval. <clears throat> so what is the probability there? What are the chances? We can see they've given us 20%. So our probability will be 20%. If you're not given in what form they're looking for the probability, you can give it in a decimal form as a percentage or even as a fraction. Okay, so we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to look at question two. That's where we're going to find scales, maps, and plans. See you right after this break. Welcome back, grade 12. Let us now continue with question number two. Like I said, it's going to be scales, maps, and plans in all the levels. They can ask you a question from level one to level four. Here we have an example <coughs> that says, according to an article published in the Sunday Times, uh, that was on the 2nd of February, 2020, South Africa has a housing backlog of roughly 2.3 million housing units. It is estimated that approximately 800 billion will be required to eradicate this backlog. In Gauteng alone, there are approximately 900,000 people renting backyard rooms. 
To address this rental demand, INDLU developed a mobile app to link landowners with tenants. All communications and administration aspects of the renting agreements are managed through the mobile app. Refer to the map of Calfontaine uh, area in Tembisa in Annexure B, where Indlu housing units were built in the vicinity of the Calfontaine Corner Shopping Center. The entrance to the shopping center is located in Snook Street. Answer the questions or the following questions. Right, so we're talking about a map of Calfontaine uh, area with the shopping center there, as you can see from the map. And there is in blue. Now let us see what kind of questions they can ask us here. It says Lufuno recently moved into one of the in blue units. Give him directions. Give him directions. We're going to explain here. From Inlu Housing Unit to Calfontaine Corner Shopping Center. So let's take him from home to the mall. Okay, so we need to mention where he is turning at what street because that's where you get your marks. So from home, he will have to turn away right on this uh, blue tank street. After turning right, just there by the crossroad, he has to turn right again. Right and continue straight on Frey's uh, Fish uh, Street. Continue until the T-junction, then where is, it where is he going to turn? He's going to turn left on Angel Fish Street. Continue on Angel Fish Street. You can even mention the streets that he's going to pass on the site if the distance is quite long. Then again, he's going to turn. He's going to turn left on King Clip Close. But just after turning, not so far, he's gonna turn again on Snook Street. Where is he turning? He's turning right. Continue straight on uh, Snook Street. Then he's gonna turn left, uh, where he will meet or where he will see the shopping uh, center on his left hand side. There is the shopping center. Did you notice that I've been mentioning turning, but then turning left or right? You can even use compass direction if you're given compass direction, but it's very important for you to tell us where am I turning, which street am I turning into, or which block am I turning into if you're given a different map. So these are the directions in full. So turning right on which street, and then turning on which street until the person gets to their destination. Don't confuse it with the general direction or the compass direction. That one, remember, we're just using the compass direction, the compass itself. Okay. If Lufuno cannot walk further than one kilometer with the parcels that he purchased from Calfontaine Corner Shopping Center, would you say, based on the scale of the map, that he can walk back to his Indlu house from the shopping center. On the map, the distance to his home measured 40 centimeters, while the line from A to B represents 450 meters in real life. So the question is basically asking you what? They are asking you to tell us if it's viable for him to walk or not. But how can we do that? We need to go back to our concept of scales. We need to go and measure and recalculate that distance to see if he will be able to walk that distance or not. Let's go back to our map. There is our map. There is our ruler. That ruler there, if you were to zoom in, the A is there, the B is there. So our ruler is right there at A. Let me remove Right, so what do we have? There is what we're looking for, and that is about 19.1. You see my ruler started at zero. Make sure yours also starts at zero. So that 
A to B, it's as if it's your bar. It's like your bar scale, but they asked it differently. So what are we going to do then? That 19.1, we're going to write it here as the measurement from, from the bar. 19.1 is equivalent to 450 meters as they said on our statement. And then they gave us the distance on the map from uh, his house to the mall, to the shopping center or vice versa. It's 40 centimeters. How do we find this distance that they're asking for? Well, I usually do these calculations like this. You can use a cross multiplication, but I look on the side where there is enough information, which is this side. Then I take the 40, I divide it with the number that is above 40, which is 19,1. The answer that I get, I'm going to multiply it with, I'm going to multiply it with 450. So my question mark will be 40 divided by 19.1. And the answer, I'm going to multiply it by 450. Let's go and do that calculation. So it's 40, 40 divided by 19.1. Then the answer, I multiply it by 450. There I get how much? I get 942. Point four one, so is nine hundred and forty two point four one what meters? So he cannot walk more than one kilometer. Do we know how many kilometers is nine point? Uh, sorry, nine four two point four meters. You can simply do that by dividing by a thousand. How do we know that we divide by thousand? We need to go back and revise our matrix system. And we know we're just going to move a decimal from here. Then it's going to be 0, 0,9424 kilometers. Is this more than a kilometer? No. Therefore, what do we say? He can walk. He can walk because it's less than, it's less than one kilometer. All right. So another different way of asking a bus scale, grade 12s, don't get used to just that small bar on a side. And also remember, sometimes they can give you the scale in a different unit, maybe in miles. You need to also know your conversions of, of, of imperial system to take you to either your kilometers or to miles if they want it in uh, those units. Okay, I hope it makes sense. Let us now go on to the next question. <coughs> Excuse me. It says that the diagram alongside show a set of labeled assembly instructions. Note, uh, not in, a, in order of assembly, to build a toy car with Lego blocks. So they've given you diagrams, but they're not in order. Let's see what the question is asking us. They're asking us to write down the correct order of the assembly instructions to build the toy car using the letters A, B, C, D, and E. <clears throat> so let's look at our diagram. We can see this is the finished product. So that's the last one. Usually it's the easy one to write down. And we can see that this is the beginning of the stages where you only have one Lego. Then you're going to write it there. From there, what happens? For us to get to the structure C, it seems like we have to go to B first because that's where we put in the body part. We, 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 we put it the other way around, upside down. Then from there, we go and we put it properly. That is our E. And then our A, that's where now we need to, we have everything else, but we need to put our wheels. So this is the order of the Lego. Sometimes they can just give you the drawings and the key, word, the, the, the key notes where they tell you if you're going to... <coughs> Sorry, they give you the parts that you're going to use rather, and they ask you to assemble it yourself. Just remember how to do it. You're going to give step-by-step -step instructions yourself. Now they're asking us which letter A, B, C, D, or E fits the instructions, which letter will fit the instruction. Flip over the part assembly, flip over, turn it uh, perhaps upside down. 
which uh, diagram is that? We see from D, B, we are turning it over. That is the instruction, so we're going to write B as the one that fits the instruction. <coughs> Excuse me. Number three, they are, asked, they are giving us a different uh, question. They, they're saying a can of Lego blocks contains 20 red blocks, 25 blue blocks, 28 green blocks, and 30 black blocks, together with 27 white blocks. A block is randomly selected from the can. Determine the probability that the block will be blue. So we know the probability is uh, the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of those blocks that are there. So it simply means we need to go and add 20 plus 25 plus 28 plus 30 plus 27. You will see when you add them there, they give you 130. What number is it of blue blocks? Blue blocks, blue blocks, there you have 25. They did not tell us in what form. I'm leaving it here. Simplify it. If you want, write it as a decimal or as a percentage. You are still going to be correct. Okay, so question two, maps and plans. Let's move on to question three now. In question three, we've got measurements. I know a lot of us don't like measurements, but measurements is actually fun because it's practical. So let us see what kind of questions we have here. We have a question about Mrs. Dietlerk. They say she bought a 500 milliliters of motor oil. She is aware that the can of oil is not filled to its capacity. Below is a photograph of a can of motor oil and a diagram. So we have a photograph and we have a diagram showing the external dimensions of the cylindrical can. There you have a picture. You can see it in real life and then you can see the diagram of it. You are given conversion factor there, one centimeter cubed is equivalent to one milliliter. Then you're given this, just take note, they are in different units, even before you do your calculation. So you have a choice of changing it, but it's easier to change it per question because it will depend on what form or what unit they want your answer to be in. Then the question there says, calculate the actual volume of the can. They've given us the formula. We cannot overemphasize the need of you to know the formulas yourself in case you are given more than one at a time. Now they're asking us to calculate the volume of the, uh, the can. We can see the units are not the same. They haven't given us uh, the unit to find it in, but preferably we'll work with centimeters because of the note that they've given us here. So what do we need to do first? We are given a diameter. So the first thing is to change that diameter and convert it or divide it so that you can get the radius. So we're gonna take 8,5 and divide it by two. 8,5 divided by two. How much do you get? You get 4,25, 4,25 centimeters. Now the radius is ready. What else do we need to convert? The height. How do we do that? You use your matrix system. Kilometers, meters, centimeters, and millimeters. I'm not gonna go in detail. I'm assuming you have done this a lot of times and you're still going to go and refresh your mind. I'm just writing it up here for you so that you can see. So when we're going, when we're going from left to right, we multiply. Then from right to left, we divide with the same factor. Divide by 10, divide by 100, and then divide by 1,000. So we are here from meters to centimeters. We are moving forward, so to speak. Hence, we're multiplying by 100. Then what is our answer? Let us go and do the calculation. So we have 0, comma. I know some of you already, you saw the answer because you know how to shift your decimal. Let's see. So our answer is 10, 10,5. So we're going to write our height 
10,5. It's now in centimeters. Then we're going to substitute into our formula. Correct substitution, there's a mark for that. Make sure you substitute correctly. This is where a lot of us might go wrong. Remember to square your answer. So we're going to do our calculations. We have 3, 142. We multiply it by 4,25. You can put it in brackets, uh, but the calculator will still square it even if you don't. Multiply by 10.5. Then we get our answer. So the answer is 5. 195,89. Let's round it off to uh, one decimal. After comma, we can say nine. Eh? So it's five. The answer will be 595, sorry, 595,9 centimeter cube centimeter cube and that's how we find the volume okay so question 3.1.2 there they're asking us to find the volume of the empty space remember in the statement the can was not full to capacity so what is the volume of that empty space if maybe i were to say it's it's somewhere here that's just an estimation eh? this empty space what is its volume well, we need to remember that it is filled to 500 milliliters of uh, motor oil. This is in milliliters. So the first thing we need to do is to convert this milliliters to centimeter cubed. Remember your note? When you look at the ratio here is one is to one. So if this is one, then it means the other side is also one. So if you increase it by five on one side, then automatically on the other side, it's also going to be five. So it means if you have 500 milliliters, then you're simply going to have what? You're also going to have 500 centimeter cubed. And then from there, we're going to, to, to subtract it from the volume that we calculated in the previous question. So we will say 595 minus 500. So we go, we already have it on our calculator. So we're just going to say subtract. 500. Then the answer is 95,5. The answer is 95,5 centimeter cubed. That is the volume that was not filled with um, anything, with the oil. Okay, <clears throat> the height, sorry, of the motor oil in the can, that's what they're asking us to calculate. They say calculate the height of the motor oil in the can. They've given us the formula. They don't want us to calculate the volume this time. <coughs> Excuse me. They want us to find this height here because here we know it's 500 uh, cubic centimeters or it's the can now, it's, it's 500 milliliters full. So we're going to then use our knowledge of volume to calculate what is missing. So here we have our substitution already in the formula. What is the volume? Uh, we know the volume is 200, not 200, it's 500. It's 500, let me just rewrite that correctly. It's 500 centimeter cubed then what is uh, the value here when i multiply them so it's 4.25 i'm going to square it then the answer i'm going to say multiply by 3.142 i'm trying to simplify it so that when we divide to find the height it's easy but remember you can always start first by making h the subject of the formula and then substitute at the end so our answer there is 56,75, 56,75 times H. How do I remove this 56,75? I will divide both sides by 56,75. What I do on the right-hand side, I should also do on the left-hand side. This ones will cancel. 
then what are we going to have? Our H is going to be how much? So we're going to say 500 divided by 56,75. What is the answer? Our answer is 8.81 centimeters. So we will write to one decimal place 8.8 centimeters. And that is our height. Then we move on to the question of uh, surface area. It says that we must calculate the total surface area of a closed motor oil can. Now we are asked to find the surfaces, the top surface, the bottom surface, and the side around. We're given a formula. Remind yourself where the formula comes from uh, there when you are doing your practice uh, at home. So we're going to do what? We're going to substitute our values into the formula, our radius, we're gonna square it, and then we're going to put our radius, we're going to also put our height, and then we punch in our calculator. I'm not gonna do this with you guys because of time, but the answer that you're supposed to get on your calculator, it's 939, or 300, sorry, 393,93 uh, centimeter squared. The units for surface area is centimeter squared. Remember, units are very important. Okay, let's go for a short ad break and then we'll come back and finish off question number four. Welcome back. Let us go and do question four. Remember question four, it can be a different context that we are not familiar with, and it's a combination of the two topics from all the levels, from one to four. Let's see. Here it says a rectangular area with measurements or dimensions four meter, uh, 10 meter by four meter must be paved with circular stones. The blue area needs to be filled with sand. The blue area needs to be filled with sand. Remember, or just a, of note, these figures are not drawn according to scale. So don't go measuring and trying to see how you can convert. So what are we asked to do? It says, if each stone has a radius of 25 centimeters, how many stones do you need to cover this area? If the stones laid against one another, as indicated in the picture, sorry, if the stone laid against it, uh, one another, as indicated in the picture, calculate how many stones will be needed. That is the first question. So what do we have? We have the radius from here to there, but we're looking for the diameter for us to be saying the length of the diameter, the length of the diameter, until we are done with our length-wise uh, calculation. Then we go to the breadth. We go the diameter going down, the diameter going down, so that we know the length that fits into or the, 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 the diameter, the number of diameters that will fit going across our breadth. So we need to make sure that the units are the same you have 25 centimeters, you first need to take the 25, multiply it by two for you to get the diameter. So your diameter will be what? It will be 50, but it's 50 centimeters. What is our next step? We need to convert this centimeters to meters. Centimeters to meters is as if I'm going backwards. So I'm going to divide by 100. Dividing by 100, what do I get? I get... Uh, 0, 0,5. That is my diameter, 0, 0,5 meters. So I'm going to take this 0, 0,5, divide it with the length, or divide it into the length, meaning I will say the length divided by 0, 0,5 and also the breadth divided by 0, 0,5. So what is 10 uh, divided by 0, 0,5? 10 is our length as we have seen in the statement. So 10 divided by 0, 0,5 will give us it will give us, yes, it will give us 20. 
So along the length, I've got 20 of those uh, stones that I can put. What about along the breadth? 4 divided by 0 0,5. 4 divided by 0 0,5. It gives you how much? It gives you 8. Along the breadth, you're going to have 8 of them. Now you're looking for the total number, the area. So you're going to take that 20 and you multiply it by 8. What is 20 multiplied by 8? You say 20 times 8, it gives you how much? It gives you 160 stones. So you have 160 stones that you can lay on that area. This method, it's the realistic method. We know when you are, you are, you are, you are paving, you can't just find the area of the stones and then divide it with the, or take the area of the rectangle and divide it with the, of the, with the area of the stones. You need to know stone by stone how much you can, so that you avoid a lot of, of cuts as well. And also when we package, we use the same method, length by length, breadth by breadth, or length by diameter, you know, breadth by diameter, length by breadth. So you can be asked questions on which one is the best method of packaging. You need to know that you can package your boxes differently. So take note of this method is very, very practical and helpful when it comes to packaging as well. Then four point, uh, the next question, we're not going to be doing it in full, but I'm just going to show you the method that you need to use. There it says, if each stone has a radius of uh, 2,5 that we have already learned, the B question, they're asking us to calculate the area between the stones that needs to be filled with sand. So you want this blue key, blue, blue things here, uh, blue areas here, how much are they? I can't go subtracting them. I don't even know how I'm going to subtract them if I were to do them small, small like that. But I know mathematically if I find the area of my rectangle and then I take this stone, I know they are 160, and then I find the area of the 160 as a whole, and then I subtract the two areas. I'm going to find my answer. In short, this is the method you can use. So you find the area of the rectangle, you find the area of the circles, but remember to multiply it by 160 because there are 160 of them. Then you subtract the two values, then it will give you 8,58 meters squared. Those are the uh, areas where you need to fill the sand uh, after you do your pavement. Okay. Right, so moving along to another question. This one is maps and plans. It says Takairo and her mother and father plan to travel from Okaanja to Johannesburg along these roads, B1, A2, and other roads as indicated on the map shown in Annex D. They will cross the border into Botswana and they plan to stay overnight where in Khaboroni. The following morning, they will continue on their journey across the border into South Africa, and then travel via Pretoria to where? So their destination is Johannesburg from Okahanja. Okay, that is what they told us. Added information, it says the average time they will spend at a border crossing is about 20 minutes, while they stop for 15 minutes at other stops along the way, they plan to stop in towns or cities approximately 200 kilometers away from each other. They plan to stop twice between Khaboroni and Johannesburg. So use an extra D and the information provided to answer the questions that follow. Let's see an extra D. Very quite, uh, quite an interesting map there. It shows us the road distances from uh, Ventwoop to Pretoria. That is the one from up here going down there. Okay. What can we expect? Identify the type of map used here. Ah, I know you know this map. What is it? It's what we call a strip map. It's a strip map or strip chart. So you see the importance of knowing your maps. Is it a national map? Is it a profile map? Profile map you must also go back and revise because it's very important like the others. Know the skills that you need to attack or to attend to those questions. Mention, that is question number two, 
mentioned the national road route or routes they will pass on or they will drive on in South Africa. This is South Africa. What are the national routes? National routes, you see it with N. So there you go. You've got two of them. You write them down, N4 and N1. Then you get your two marks. Number three, give the names of the countries shown on the map. Again, where do we find the answers? On the map. We go there, Namibia, Botswana, and South Africa. Then you get your three marks. You just list them, you just name them, and then you get your marks. The next question they're asking us to convert the distances between Pretoria and Johannesburg to miles. We need to convert this to miles. But let's first find out what is the distance between uh, Johannesburg and Pretoria. We go down there. Here is Pretoria. What is the distance? This distance here is given in kilometers. You, you will see as we continue with the properties of this map, it's a very interesting map. So this 58 that we see here is in kilometers. This distance we are asked to convert it to miles. Again, I'm going to use uh, this scale. I'm going to write my 58 kilometers under this 1.6. Then I'm looking for the answer in miles. I don't know how much is that. So how do I do it? I look on the side where there's enough information like this one here. So I will take the bottom uh, value, I will divide it with the top one. Then the answer, I will multiply it by one. So my question mark will be, you will take your calculator and say 58 divided by 1.6, multiply that by one. Then I'm sure there on your calculators you have your answer. I'm not going to do this answer for you. I know you can do it. Okay. So let's go forward to this one. It says calculate the total driving time excluding the stops from Okaanja to Johannesburg if the average speed at which they drive is 108 kilometers per hour. Okay, let's go calculate our distance. We're moving from Okaanja. From Okaanja to Ventuk, it's about what? It's about 68 kilometers. From Ventuk to Khaburoni, remember they are going to Khaburoni, but now we have to first pass Libotse or Lebatse. Up until Libatse, how do we find this distance? Look on your left-hand side. There you have zero, and there you have the distance at Lobatse. How much is it? 1107. They go in at Khaburoni, they're going to sleep there, remember, according to the statement. What is the distance there? 45 kilometers. But they're not staying in Khaburoni. The following morning, they go back and, uh, to the main road and they go to uh, Johannesburg. So return distance. So you're going to take this 45 and multiply it by 2 because they went in Khaburoni and now they are exiting Khaburoni. Then from there, you go down, down, down to Pretoria. What is the distance from Lobatse to, to, to Pretoria? Use the right-hand side now to find your distance up until they are, ah, it's 279. Then from Pretoria, you go to Johannesburg, is 58. So we're going to take all these distances and add them up. There's another method where you can find this distance. I'm going to concentrate on this one for now. There is your answer. After adding, don't forget to multiply 45 by 2 because it's in and out, not just in. Then you get 1,602 kilometers. The question did not ask us to find the distance. They asked us to find the average, uh, to find the time taken. So we're going to go and substitute. The total distance uh, we are given, or we managed to calculate, it's 1,602, 1,602 kilometers. The average speed we are given is 108 uh, kilometers per hour. And the time, we don't know. We're looking for the time. Just like we did on that question of volume, we're going to divide with what we don't want. We just want to cancel it out. We just want to remove it. What I do on the right-hand side, I also do on the left-hand side. This will cancel. And this two will divide how much is going or uh, uh, what is going to be my time. 
my time is going to be my time is going to be 14 point let me just remove that ink there uh, 14 point okay I hope you can see it there it's 14.83 hours. If they ask you to write time in hours and minutes, remember to convert your time. You have 14, then you take what is remaining, 0 0.83, you multiply it by 60 to take it to minutes. Okay, so the next question, 4.2.6, it says, explain why the length of the strip from Lobate to Khaburoni is shorter than the length of the strip from Rustenburg to Sun City, where else the actual distances shown in the strip chart are nearly equal. This is the ones that they're talking about. Why are they so, you see, if you talk about scale, that, that is not proper. But the reason is actually that this map is not drawn according to scale. It shows us the actual distances. It is very good to help us to plan our trip if we want to go anywhere. You can calculate the cost of uh, your trip. You can calculate how much fuel you will need and the rest and all that. So this is quite an interesting kind of map. Uh, it doesn't require you to know the number and the bus scale. I'm just going to quickly take you through this one because of time. Here they tell us about uh, the consumption rate. They say that the car that they are using has a consumption rate of 15.6 liters per 100 kilometer. Kilo, uh, Ta Takahiro's father claimed that they will use less than 190 liters to travel from Ventuk to Khaburoni. Recalculate, recheck. Let's go and recheck. We are rechecking if this is actually true. So the first thing we need to do is to find our distances. So you're going to do this. You're going to add the distances and get the answer of uh, those two towns or between those two towns. And then after you will use your consumption rate as your start of uh, the beginning of your question, how to calculate the number of liters. Then the distance that you found here, you're going to substitute it here under kilometers. And then you're going to calculate the number of liters. Again, you can use any method. You will take the bottom one, divide by the top one, multiply by 15,6, or you can cross multiply and find your answer. Then after you find the, the, the number of liters, then you will conclude. Remember to compare and conclude your values. Is it valid or not valid? That's how you can go about answering this question. Okay, so great jobs. We have come to the end of our lesson. I really hope you had fun like I did. Indeed, you can do uh, better in this paper if you focus on those levels that I told you about. Remember to come with your ruler, to relax and enjoy the paper. Believe that you can do it. Use that reading time. Again, I won't stop emphasizing on the importance of reading your paper before you answer it to avoid mistakes. Start each question on a new page. Leave a space to allow yourself a space to write down something if you forgot to write it down. And all the very best for your exam. Go and study all the other things that we did not do together and go and get that distinction. Thank you very much uh, for watching. That's it from me. Goodbye.